Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Press TV's Top 5. I'm Barry Ahonado. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says his country has received the first shipment of S-300 anti-aircraft missile systems from Russia. President Assad says the second batch of the missiles will be delivered soon. He also says Syria will retaliate against any possible military strikes by Israel. Assad made the comments in an interview with Lebanese television channel Al Manar. The interview will be broadcast later on Thursday. Press TV will also air the interview at 1800 hours GMT. And for more insight on the Syrian president's comments, we're now joined by retired Army General Mr. Elias Farhad, who's joining us via satellite from the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Mr. Farhad, welcome to the program. Uh, tell us about the significance of the S-300s reaching Syria. How much of a change can this development have uh, in the bigger picture, especially with regards to Israeli hostilities? Uh, Assad was clear uh, in the excerpt of that interview that there will be retaliation against any future Israeli aggression on Syrian territory. Uh, currently, the Israeli army is superior to the uh, all the armies of the region, including the Syrian army, and it's superior in its uh, in the air force. The, the Israeli air force is much more developed and uh, much more uh, bigger and sophisticated than the uh, the air force of the of Syria or, and other countries. Uh, because of that, and because of the freedom of uh, movement for the uh, uh, Israeli Air Force over the uh, uh, over the space of Lebanon, airspace of Lebanon and uh, Syria, uh, and due to the Israeli involvement in the uh, current uh, crisis in Syria, uh, Russia uh, Russia equipped Syria with a system S-300, and yesterday uh, President Assad said it's already in possession of, uh, uh, of a batch of these missiles and uh, they are waiting for uh, uh, another, uh, another shipment of missiles uh, S-300. The characteristics of, of this missile is very important and sophisticated. It uh, can engage with targets out to 195 kilometers and up to uh, altitude of 32 kilometers and with a minimum altitude down to 25 meters it can engage with ballistic missiles both of short range and medium range and the uh, uh, the head of the uh, of the missile and the guidance system uh, are not subject to any kind of jamming and they do, they do not af uh, affect with the jamming systems of the israeli uh, the, of the israeli radar and electronic warfare so because of that the united states israel and europe all of them are protesting the uh, the the equipment the equ equipping the syrian army with this kind of missiles but uh, furthermore this this missiles are not an offensive weapon they are an a defensive weapon that means they prevent any attack from the air against Syria. They enable Syria to defend on, uh, defend itself from air attacks even from Turkey or from the NATO or from Israel. Uh, I think because of that uh, there is a great protest. But in Israel the uh, Israeli uh, defense minister Mr. Yalon said that they are acting to prevent this missiles on to becoming uh, operational which is which means that there will be uh, uh, some operations by special forces inside Syria or some strikes from uh, by by the uh, Israeli well. air force in order to test these uh, the, these missiles Thank you very much retired army general from Beirut Mr. Elias Fahra thank you for contributing to the program Elsewhere, Russia says Syria's opposition coalition is seeking to prevent peace efforts in an attempt to provoke military intervention in the country. One gets the impression that the national coalition and its regional responses are doing everything they can to prevent a political process from starting, and by any means, including dishonest work of a public opinion in the West, to achieve military intervention in Syria. Lavrov says the Syrian opposition is not ready to take part 
in the upcoming peace talks in Geneva. He also says the opposition's demands are impossible to fulfill. The comments by the Russian foreign minister come a day after the Syrian opposition called for President Bashar al-Assad's resignation as a precondition for participating in the international conference. Meanwhile, independent UN investigators say most Syrian insurgents are not seeking democracy. Brazilian expert Paulo Pinheiro and his team of UN investigators have also warned about the increasing radicalization of the foreign-backed insurgents. Well, Chief Editor of uh, Voice of Russia radio station, Mr. Dmitry Babich, joins us now uh, on the line from Moscow. Sir, welcome to the program. Let's start off with your opinion on uh, Russian foreign minister's reaction uh, to the impossible demands of the opposition. Well, I think that uh, the Russian foreign minister was right uh, when he said that the real impediment for the peace in Syria is uh, the Syrian opposition and not Bashar al-Assad's government, because we know uh, the government's position. It has been ready for talks for many months. Uh, after all, it was uh, you know, agreed in Geneva last year uh, that uh, the government uh, of Syria would be part of the equation in finding, uh, you know, the way Syria will be uh, governed in the future. Unfortunately, the Western countries have been pushing for a military solution. Now it looks like the United States has started to hesitate, uh, and the uh, United States agreed to co-sponsor, uh, you know, this peace conference together with Russia. But now it's quite obvious who wants uh, to thwart that conference. It's obviously the radical part of the Syrian opposition and some European countries such as France and Great Britain who keep talking uh, about some kind of, uh, you know, uh, dictatorial government in Syria that uh, Bashar al-Assad is not eligible for these talks. Any person who has uh, support of the Syrian population and obviously a part of the Syrian population supports Mr. Assad, any such person should be a party to talks. Why do you think that the opposition is being seen uh, as trying to derail any uh, form of peace efforts? And also, uh, what could be the dire repercussions of a military intervention uh, in Syria? Well, because the opposition won full power, I think uh, that they realize now that if honest elections are held now, they will probably get even less votes uh, than before the start of the civil war because they reveal themselves to be very radical and sometimes dangerous for serious minorities. So they want a military victory, and uh, they want to achieve that victory uh, by foreign hands, because they themselves are clearly unable to win the war in the short term, uh, as it had been planned. So that makes a foreign intervention possible, and this is the reason why there was such a nervous reaction in the West to Russian anti-aircraft missiles. After all, these missiles are not going to hit civilian population in Syria. They cannot hit Israel. They can only protect Syria from a foreign intervention. From Voice of Russia radio station, Mr. Dmitry Babich, thank you very much for joining us here on Press TV.